Projectile manipulation is something I'm pretty excited about in fighting games. Whilst for most characters this means that the projectile can either go fast or slow, for the two lads that we're going to be talking about today it's their main thing and something that helps to keep Guilty Gear at the top of my most played games list. Now I don't like zoners, after all I like having friends, but I do like when zoners are flipped on their head. Most typically when we think of projectiles we think of tools with the purpose to keep someone at bay, something to create a space between you and your opponent and force them to you. Whilst I'm fine with this type of projectile so long as it doesn't look like this, I'm much more fond of the reverse, a tool with the purpose of keeping you stuck to someone. Think for example Carmine in Undernight who keeps your opponent stuck to you after combos and pressure with this spinning blade of blood because we're very cool and we're also 15. However the best type of projectile is one that combines both of these philosophies together. When one design theory and another love each other very much, sometimes they make babies and this time they had twins, introducing the tuning ball and the 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 ball, the snooker ball, it's a, it's a big snooker ball. The tuning ball belongs to Kum Haehyun. Is Haehyun the robot or the girl piloting it? I don't know, but what I do know is the projectile has two different versions, three if you're including supers, and is a reimagining of the traditional fireball. Tuning ball has no set speed, but can be influenced in speed and direction by which direction you're holding the control stick. This means that you can do a slow ball, or a fast ball, or even a stop ball, and you can change at any point in these. For me, this is great fun, having something that I can summon at first to have one purpose but suddenly change after makes for a more flexible fireball game as now it goes from a tool that specifically keeps people at bay to keeping them from playing in a specific spot or making them waste a jump to avoid it and then sharking them on the way down or using it as a tool for oki i think you get the point there's choices to be made here after the initial choice some would debate that the red tuning ball which has three hits only serves function within oki situations and whilst i wouldn't say that you're wrong there's greater potential here and it shouldn't be discarded because of the ways that it's exceptional one job. But why is this more fun to me than something like just a Hadouken or any other traditional fireball? It's due to the manipulation. In Street Fighter, when a fireball comes at you, you figure out its speed and you go from there. The mind game doesn't stop once you know how fast the fireball is going, but you start to build a game plan around how they're going to respond to a set scenario. With the tuning ball, the fireball is both your game plan and your point to build upon. What to some would be seen as a wasted fireball, to others would be used as an opportunity to lay some ass beaten. I don't, I don't think I should use the word arse in my script, it doesn't... I'm too British. This is obviously assisted by Guilty Gear's many possibilities from a very dense set of mechanics, but the projectile being built to be as flexible as the systems that you're playing in helps to drive home the limitless possibilities of it. But this is just one of Guilty Gear's takes on this limitless possibility. The tuning ball was supposed to be an expansion of fireballs in a traditional sense, but our other pal here took the idea of what a fireball does and just completely turned it around. What if you wanted to be more active than ever, to graduate from just one axis of projectile? to two. Well, welcome to the school of Venom. Venom says one projectile, that's cute. What about two? Or four? And they can all collide with each other and split into different directions. What if I could set up a ball but I don't have to use it and I can also reposition it later for when I do? What if I could teleport to a ball I set? What if I could set up a ball off of an active ball and that ball leveled up the ball I just set? What if I could level up my balls? What if I was just the greatest projectile character ever made but I'm also an aggressive rushdown character? I'm glad to see that you were so keen to go from the puddle to the paddling pool of depth, but welcome to the ocean. I hope you brought your diving gear. <laughs> Since I don't expect all of you to be playing Guilty Gear since some of you come from here, some of you come from here, and some of you come from uh, here, ew, I'll quickly explain how this shit works. If you do quarter circle back plus a button, you get one of four potential ball set positions. However, say you've got one of these balls already set. When you make the next one, the previous ball will travel towards a new set position and reassign where it should set depending on which button was pressed when it was set. These balls can be leveled up by either rebounding them from already set balls or holding the input on these two ball setting moves. Also, so any of the balls that are set from this move won't move when you set a new ball. Getting confused? So was I. That's why I stopped playing Venom and played Bedman for 300 hours, but once I realized I actually want to enjoy Guilty Gear, I came back and focused on just two balls. These are the key balls, and whilst the other ones are still useful, their setups are a bit more confusing and specific, aka I don't know what I'm doing with them, so fuck them. That's something that people don't really get about Venom when they're learning him, unfortunately. Whilst realistically there are a bajillion different setups, you only really need to learn that P is good in neutral and K is very fucking good on Oki. Uh, but anyway, this isn't really a guide. Why is this so fucking sick? 
I personally love all the decision making that happens right here because once you've got a ball set up, there's so many potential choices that can happen. I'll never fucking use them, but I watch good Venoms and I just... Uh. But why are the choices more deep here with balls as opposed to just like this, for example? Well, it all comes down to potential. Let's say you've done a ball set P, okay? So now you've got choices. So many choices that I can't actually run through them all, but let's just run through a couple. You can tap it with P and that covers a straight line in front of you and travels slowly towards them. This would allow you to approach them with a slight degree of safety because now if they want to contest you with a button of their own, they will almost certainly get hit. This means that it either forces a jump out or they tank it and you get your pressure going. Okay, but let's say you're fine advancing without a ball. You're confident that they won't press on the ground, but you want to keep them there. Okay, so now off of this, you want to do a 6P to cover the air. Even if they block this, from the air you've taken all the momentum out of their jump which gives you advantage you might get hit on the way in if they're contesting you from the ground but that's your fault you made the decision to cover the air instead okay but what if you don't want to approach at all well you can start just resetting the situation with p set into p or you can do a p set into a charge set which gives you a level two ball okay they did this and they're still sat there but instead now you want to cover both the ground and the air and you also want to set a ball at the same time do an s set into a p set and then charge set with h if you want the balls to go to the other side side fast, but hit S if you want them to go to the other side slower. If you set with S, you can also now tap it with P and approach with the level 2 ball. Do you see the potential? And none of these are set points. In fact, this isn't even the list of the full potential of things that you could have done. You don't push a ball out and suddenly it's got set rules. Okay, well it does, but it's not rigid and the ideas can build and build and build upon themselves. Due to the nature of the moves that you can activate the balls with, you're also freed up a lot after you've created a setup, which allows you to push into rush down mode which creates a very active play style. You may be questioning how this is fun for you as the opponent and I think it's fun because it's balanced quite like a traditional zoner. Zoners are designed to be hard to pin down but once they're down they've got no specialized tools to get them out of a situation. The thing about Venom is that he's encouraged to come towards you instead of push himself away from situations that could very quickly become dangerous. Obvious design right? Wrong. Take for example Jacko, this stupid, dumbass, moron's character, house set, you fucking bitch. What did they do? What did they do? Oh, meatless DP, that's fine. Oh, you want to force her to come to you, projectiles? Oh, well, whippy, I got my magic barrier up. Jacko isn't fun to play against, not because she sets up houses and she wins. Okay, well, that's kind of true, but it would be like if Venom set a ball and then every three seconds, another one spawned for the rest of the match. And the fact that that literally isn't hyperbole hurts my soul. Jacko isn't fun because she has all of this distant pressure bullshit that Venom also has, but never has to come to you. And then when you do have a pin down, she, you're just playing a guessing game of like, oh, I guess you could reversal now. We all understand that reversal DP isn't actually that good, but when you combine it with the rest of her kit, even if it's not good, it's fucking annoying. Not even Slayer has an invincible wake up DP without Mia. Why the fuck does Jacko have one? I guess that Jacko's horrible failure of a character at least shows us something, and it's not that the people that pick her are failures as people. Jacko shows us that when creating characters that have a projectile basis, they have to take hits in other areas. Venom is really cool, but he's got the worst wake up options in the game, and without a ball set, he goes from a top six character to a high mid tier because he can only control so much space vertically, and horizontally, he can only really get a strong knockdown at a short distance. Heihun's really exciting right here, but he's so big that getting from here to here without making the right read at the start of the round can really fuck you up. And also, because you're so wide, you just take some awful Oki. But these are sacrifices that I'm willing to make so long as there's still engaging systems for me to play on this side whilst also still being engaging on the other side. I hope that more games in future find interesting ways of doing projectile manipulation. Whilst I'm fine with randomized projectiles like Omen and Faust, they're pretty cool. Altering Hadoukens is fine. I just find them a bit, you know, stale. But a fun projectile game just doesn't go stale. I mean, I've been playing gear for years and I've just played these two characters. I mean, I just never get sick of this shit. I mean, look at this shit. You're not going to do this at Street Fighter. But like, what could new projectile manipulation even look like? There's Beerus in Dragon Ball, but he exists in a game where, you know. And then there's Krillin who exists, but you know. Could you imagine if there was like a, a character that could shoot Hadouken and then it could split off and go up and down? I don't know how you'd balance it, but it would be cool? Or what if there was like a Hadouken that had no active hitbox but you could detonate it whenever you wanted? What if you had like a pool of blood and you could move it around and had projectiles come out of it? 
that one already exists, but you know, like in a game that I play, I just think that this can go so much further, not in shitty ways, like making them summons or just making it so that you put them out constantly. I think that the projectile just has a lot that can be done with it that isn't being done. And whether or not it's a good idea to do some of those things is a completely different discussion in its own. I think it'd just be neat to give it a shot. Is this just me? Is this, if, is it just me? If it's not, I, I don't know, like write to your favorite game dev or company or whatever and be like, yo, can we get some cool projectiles or some shit? I don't know. Or we can just be chads and play Guilty Gift forever. I don't fucking know. Video done now.